Hi, I'm Dr. Laurent Bannock and I'm the Director of the Institute of Performance Nutrition. And in this Science to Practice overview, I'm going to be focusing on physical activity for body fat loss and specifically the metabolic effects of substitution and compensation on total energy expenditure. So most people want to take up exercise largely because they want to alter their body composition, they want to lose weight, or more specifically, they want to lose body fat. And of course, what the science tells us is very clearly that they need to achieve a negative energy balance to induce an energy deficit. Now, in order to understand how complicated this or how nuanced this is, we need to explore metabolism a little further. And here you can see the total energy expenditure has a number of different core components, three to be precise. The first one is basal metabolic rate, BMR, and this is the energy used to keep the body functioning at rest. Secondly, we have the physical activity energy expenditure, PAEE, and this is the energy expended during exercise and non-exercise activity thermogenesis, otherwise known as NEAT. And thirdly and lastly here in this model, we have diet-induced thermogenesis, DIT. And this is the energy cost of using food for use and storage. And together, this adds up to our total energy expenditure package, if you like. The key science to practice consideration here, particularly when we're concerned with performance nutrition, is that many textbooks state that the BMR is the largest contributor to energy expenditure, which absolutely may well be true for sedentary people, which is the majority of people studied, um, but may not be the case for active or in particularly very active people. So the reason for this is because physical activity energy expenditure can be a major contributor. Um, and in these various models that we're looking at here, you can see that there's a difference between sedentary, moderately active and highly active individuals. And in particular, you can see that physical activity energy expenditure component of total energy expenditure can vary from a few hundred calories for a relatively sedentary person to up to perhaps a few thousand calories per day for a really highly active person, such as a, an elite athlete, an elite recreational athlete, and so on. So clearly, from this, we need to deduce that physical activity can therefore be an effective way of inducing a negative energy balance but primarily in the sort of very to highly active groups within our population. But it's not as simple as that. As I mentioned, um, metabolism is quite complicated and further nuanced by the fact that there are some factors that might influence this further when we consider these numbers that we're looking at. And in this situation, we can see that those who undertake exercise as a means of reducing body fat should also be aware of what's known as substitution effects. And here we have an example of a number of substitutions. Firstly, we can see um, the metabolic calculations for where no scheduled exercise um, occurs. And here we can see where the addition of exercise is factored in, 400 calories, and we assume a 400 calorie deficit. But no substitution was factored into this scenario. And when we do factor in the substitution effect, we can see that that 400 calorie exercise bout combined with the substitution effect, which results in a loss of about 180 calories in this example, uh, through a reduction in physical, act physical activity energy expenditure. The deficit, therefore, is going to look more like 220 calories, which is almost half of what we assumed without factoring in the substitution effect. So therefore, it's important that a person subtracts the loss of physical activity from the loss of the scheduled exercise. And this means that the impact of exercise on energy expenditure may not be as high as you may anticipate. 
But it's not just that. We also need to factor in the potential for compensation effects. And here we have another example for you. And in this example, we can see where the addition of a new behavior, such as a scheduled exercise session, can lead to the down-regulation of other aspects of metabolism, such as NEAT, as you can see in this example. So here, we can see that total energy expenditure is similar between conditions despite the introduction of a scheduled exercise session. So what are the take-home messages from this science to practice conundrum? Well, firstly, physical activity can help accelerate the loss of body fat. Yes, this is true. However, we cannot assume that if we attempt to increase physical activity energy expenditure, it will absolutely lead to a proportional energy deficit. And that's because factors such as substitution and compensation will mean that the energy deficit will be less than predicted and variable amongst people, particularly because some people will substitute and or compensate more than others. Physical activity also influences total energy expenditure via the regulation of muscle mass, and muscle mass is responsible for energy expenditure of around 13 calories per kilogram per day. But however, this is less influential than the overall movement itself. And so diet plus exercise should be recommended for long-term management of obesity and the maintenance of lifelong health. But ultimately, the message here for you to take home is that we should think of exercise as supplementing non-exercise activity and not simply replacing it. So you're going to want to read into this a bit further um, and there's a great special communications letter here that I have referenced here called Substitution and Compensation Effects Erode the Energy Deficit from Exercise Interventions. Please do look that up for a brief but concise overview. I also recommend you listen to my podcast on all about this, basically, with Professor Dylan Thompson, a world-leading expert on this topic, particularly as it relates to um, the impact of non-exercise activity on these factors. For a general overview of diets and body composition, I highly recommend our uh, position stand paper on this. Again, it's open access, freely available and accessible. And I also have done a podcast with the two uh, key authors of that position stand um, where you can learn in depth all about um, diets and body composition. If you really want to take your learning further, you can, of course, explore the rest of our podcasts that we have at the Institute of Performance Nutrition. And if you want to become a highly trained specialist in sport and exercise nutrition, then do consider our online diploma in performance nutrition. So to access all of our outputs and our information and so forth, please check out our social media channels at the IOPN. Of course, our YouTube channel, which you can find a link to this very video. And for everything else, please go to our website at www.theiopn.com. I am Dr. Laurent Bannock. I look forward to bringing another one of these Science to Practice Overview videos back to you very soon. Thank you for listening.